Okay, we're starting. Edgar Elliston is now speaking. The class of people in Reefton uh, was nearly uh, all of the old country. Uh, it was generally considered to be made up mostly from English and Scotch with Irish, and uh, later on a lot migrated out from Cornwall. There were, Cornwall had a lot of miners that were on tin mining. The others, uh, the Scotch uh, and English and uh, Irish and uh, an odd German or two or something like that. They each settled around Reefton. The rest of it were nearly all British, using the term broadly. They were a, uh, a, a peace-loving people and uh, hard-working in the mines. Uh, and they also tried to get a home for themselves and if they did get one, they set up to work and, and dug in a uh, garden. And uh, they brought customs home with them from England, uh, which they incorporated not only themselves and in, in, in their surroundings, but they also inculcated in their children. The mother in charge at that particular time was Mother Mary Regis from the Singleton Convent of uh, Australia. She came over in 1890. She was of a delicate nature, very religious, very holy, and uh, us boys were a little bit of the savages about us. However, uh, a few things were put into us one way or another. There was a, a request came out and possibly public pressure in which they wanted something to show the uh, return uh, soldiers and uh, those who died in a sort of a public place. Well, this piece of ground, Fennel, the engineer of the council reckoned, being a triangle was not of much use. So uh, they decided to put the war memorial there. But down the centre of it, they got a rail from the Wellington tramways, a great heavy thing. It was 32 feet long. With regard to the rotunda, uh, I had a good deal to do with that, and I drew up a plan. But how it came about there, Fennel was there, an uh, engineer, and the instructions came down from Wellington, from the government, uh, that all over the country, something had to be put up of some kind or the other to uh, recognize the centennial. And anyway, uh, they decided around about here on a band rotunda. I said that the rotunda wanted to be down where it is now. <laughs> it still remains today for the same purpose, that if there's a, a choir comes here or anything at all, it might be a politician could go down there, lit up at night, and the people of a summer night could sit on the bank or all around or stop in their motor cars along the outside, you see, and, uh, and listen to it from there. Such is the main description of the Rotunda and uh, the Soldiers Memorial. I'm now speaking of the condition of mining in uh, 1893, as handed on to me by my father, uh, Mr. Olson Senior. And uh, he said this, that in all the mines around in the years the preceding that time, 90, 1893, that uh, they were always getting the ore out by tunnels. They were high on the hill for a start in the first place. They put a tunnel in and got the ore out and got it down to the battery. And when they worked all that top page out, they went down another tunnel. And they kept going down the tunnels till they got to a flat. And uh, then there was stuff. Well, all the mines around about were, to a great extent, following the same practice, we'll say the majority. And uh, when they got down to that, from 1893, he told me on to 1897, things were pretty gloomy and reefed up. He says they'd worked all down to the levels, they had no reserves in there, there. the dividends paid every month, no reserve of money put aside for the sink down on the ore, which they knew was there in its value. They had none of that for the sink on that, and they, none of them had any money, and they couldn't find anybody, nearly all more or less in the same book. And uh, at that time, David and Jacob Simon appeared on the field. And uh, they took over five or six of the claims, the mines, and uh, then they set to in England and uh, got a half a million of money and called that they consolidated the gold fields. The one in England was the parent company, and the other here uh, shared from them, you see, and went on.
This is Edgar here. He's conducting the Nangahua Silk Band. And when he retired from conducting, he was gifted this beautiful baton here that was engraved in sterling silver from the Nangahua Silver Band. There's something really special there. It's made out of ebony. And this over here is his CV from when he was mining. Well, it says of all the jobs that he had in the mines, um, all the places that he went to, things that he specialised in. So this is formatting? This is your... Yep graphic design and formatting the book. It is, mm -hmm. and we lay it up in InDesign, and in a book like this, and it contains each of the chapters as separate files, see all the page numbers here, and then we've got our bibliography and glossary at the end. And you just import in all your photos that you've got from somewhere else. I've been using this program for over 20 years, and I still don't know everything there is to know about it. Bit of a process. Here's Edgar here when he was in the band of the 2nd Battalion Canterbury Regiment when they were over in, in France. I do believe that this is him playing here. He's not that his name is recorded there, but he's got the same profile. Mm. And mind you, he's nine years older here than he is there. With all the research going through lots of... How long did it take you to research it? It's probably been seven months. Yeah. Seven solid months of researching, refining all the text that was supplied. And nine months from the time I met Moira, so it's, yeah. the gestation is birth. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and of course Edgar was at Passchendaele. Yeah. He fought in Passchendaele. Mm. And, um, so it's been a labour of love, Paula. Absolutely. Yeah. But you've learned a lot about the Anangahua, right? I've fallen in love with the whole place, mm. even more because of would have found out about it. Yeah. So it's a it's an amazing process going through this, eh? It is. Mm. Gives me a lot of historical empathy. Mm. So this is James Print. Well, they're printing your book. So you're going to go out and you're going to see Charlie, and he's going to show you it being bound. So it's exciting right. stuff. So, I'm pleased we took the gold. Yeah, it looks, yeah, yes. it looks fabulous. The yes. colours, it looks beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Paula and yeah. Rachel, it looks stunning. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then that pushes it up, is it? Right. Like pressing it. Right. Yeah. It presses it on. And then see, done. Voila. Yeah. Is <laughs> that? Because yeah. Moira, Moira doesn't know that Paula and I are we're entering this into the book. Yeah. Same yeah. way. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <that's so> <laughs> <laughs> I'm all 
Yes, how old are you today, Moira? I'm 83. I know. I know. Yeah. Is, and Tony said to me, you know, Mum, huh? you're the youngest old person I know. <laughs> oh, right. this looks so close. Open it up because we want to see, we want to see your reaction. Oh, look, I hope, oh, look, I'll be cross if you spent a fortune. I'll be really cross. Oh, will you? Yes, I will. What are you going to do about it, Moira? <laughs> I know, Rach, I know. Oh. What a oh, 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 I know what it is. Oh, my God. Oh, Rachel. Oh. And, and Paula. Paula. And pa oh, my God. Oh. Turn, it, turn it around. Turn it around, Moira. Oh, oh. <laughs> How do you two do it? I don't know. You are the most amazing women. I've never... Do you know what? You were meant to meet. Oh, my God. Look, look how beautiful you are. Oh, look at your eyes. Look at your eyes in there. Oh, oh. Like, author. Oh. Author. Moira Lockington. Author. Oh, but I wouldn't have done it without you two. Honestly, oh, this is so... Oh, oh I can't believe it. I'll be able to leave cards all over the place. Yes, turn that thing off. No, no, and... Gosh, Rachel. This is the first one. I know. Do you know how many you have to sign, Moira? No. No, 98. Oh, Bef from. Before the launch. I'll oh. make sure I don't do some awful expletive. Just to be careful. <laughs> well done. Thank you everyone else who's purchased. Because I'm actually feeling a bit broken at the moment. <laughs> Congratulations, right, Moira. Right, now my piece of paper. And you go. go down very carefully. Right, so no blotching. We've taught done. you well. <laughs>